Back in the shop with Cass Nichols as we take a tour of his snap-on roll-around tool cart. So this is normally closed when I'm not here. You know, I keep all my stuff locked up all the time. Um, when you work with a lot of people, you tend to build those habits since I just never change them. Uh, this is a new addition. I have a, some of these M12 batteries that I never did anything with, so I bought this light. And it's not bad. It's like a little floodlight, you know, basically. So that it didn't have a bright spot. We kind of went through it earlier off camera. But that's a pretty decent light. But, you know, when I'm not using it, I just stick it right here in my box. But, you know, whenever I start using it, I do that. And then I had these were Mac sockets. And this was like a broken set I bought from Lindsay whenever he was not the Mac guy any longer. And then I got this magnet from Snap-on. And then this is the Mac locking flex head ratchet. This is a pretty nice ratchet. I like using it. I just picked this up within the last two months. So, you know. It works all right. I, I think I bought more ratchets this year than I have in my entire career. This is the quarter inch drive ratchet. I think I bought that from Lindsay whenever he was a Mac guy. And these are some bits out of a Mac kit. That's a cheap scraper. This is a snap on straight blade mini screwdriver. These are cat's paw by Mayhew. These are seal and o-ring picks. I have an Instagram video on those. Those are pretty sweet. Um, why do I have tape here? That's a good reason why I have tape here. All right. So I got this from another YouTuber and this is my magnetic based light and you can see there's tape on the bottom of it and you can see it's dirty. So when it gets dirty like that, just take the tape off. The other reason is, is if it gets dirty and I need to stick it on my top, boom, right there. It doesn't scratch my top up. So, you know, the less damage you can create, the nicer your stuff will be. And normally I keep this over here because this is where I charge over everything mostly over here. Um, sockets wise, and this is a monster cart. All I, sometimes I stick my phone here if I need to expect a call. I got my iPro, my ear pro right here. And then I use the back of the magnet. It's usually where I keep like a sheet with torque specs on it whenever I'm torquing or when I'm working on the car. You can see I have more moisture mitigation. I have these gray pneumatic half inch drive deep universal sockets or wobble sockets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are metric. They're six point. These are pretty good. I bought these from Lindsay back when he was still the Mac guy. Um, I like them. These are mostly snap-on right here. Um, there's a couple of Harbor Freight sockets right here. The only reason I have those in here is the snap-ons that they just fit in the tray better. It's kind of just a snobby thing. And then I have some chrome sockets in here because every once in a while when you're working on aluminum wheels or alloy wheels, you just have to get in some chromes. These are the snap-on 3 drive deeps and this set goes from 8 to 19. Um, they sit back here. I will, I'm going to get a little small magnet just to put back here to kind of hold them to keep them falling down. These are all snap-ons. This is the 10 to 32 set or whatever it is. And then this is 10 to 24 right here. And then I have some Craftsman. These are all 12 points. These Craftsman 12 points right here. And you know, these are for like driveline sockets. Like if you had to take a drive, you know, on a Ford driveline, you know, driveline fasteners are usually 12 point. So that's what I have in there. I use them every once in a while. There's a couple other sockets over here. Some more lug nut sockets. These are those Gorilla sockets for you know those S9 lug, lug nuts they use on everything now. These are Mac Promo. Um, I added a few sockets to it. This is an expert socket right here. And this is a Mac 21 right here. This is a Mac 21 right here. That didn't come in the set. This 20, I don't think came in this set. I think it's an expert set. Could be Mac, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. These two mid depths I got. Um, because they didn't come with an eight millimeter in the set. So they had a semi-deep. It, it didn't come with eight millimeter tall, so they had the semi-deep. And so that's what I got. And these sockets, I think if I understood right, they're made in a plant in Dallas, Texas. So if I'm wrong, Lindsay will correct me on that. But um, Stanley has a manufacturing plant in Dallas that they make a lot of the stuff for all their different brands, so, including, um, including Mac. Um, but I, I've been, I've been allegedly, I've been promised once that coronavirus is over that, or I mean, the vid is over that I can go up to. Uh, they'll give me a tour. I can get a private tour because I'm like the only person who's ever asked to go do it. That'd be cool. <laughs> so uh, right here you see I have a plier organizer. So whenever I'm working, I, I'll show you. I'll kind of give you a little, little heads up of how I do this. So if I have like pliers out, I'll just grab a couple of pliers just to kind of give you all a demonstration. What I'll do is while I'm working, I'll just set them in there so they're not flopping around my box. And then the other thing is, is then I'll have like, if I have like more than one impact, usually I'll just set my impacts up like this. Now the 14.4, most of all my 14.4 stuff has batteries on it because whenever you're moving the cart, guess what it doesn't fall over, right? The guy with the magnet on it. So 
that's typically why I have that done. And then this is this is good too right here because I can also because I like I said I'm serious when I said I torque everything. I, my torque wrench it'll hold my torque wrench in place like that, so it doesn't roll around the box while I'm moving. It'll hold extensions. It'll hold my other you know my other ratchet like that. So while you're working, you know, just grab a tool and get after it. So put these back in fast. Um, these are Mayhew Dominator. These are these angled pry bars. I don't use these all the time, but when you do need them, they are handy. And these are for like, you know, popping axles, uh, ac uh, like CB axles out or axle seals out. They're real handy. Like I said, we work on a lot of heavy driveline stuff, so it works out. The other one's similar to it. Uh, they came in a set. These are pry bars, or these are extensions. If you don't know what a three extension that's three feet long looks like, then you know, <laughs> go find another job. Uh, these are expert sockets. Like I said, for an additional set, all I do is they just sit over here and I just use them. And these are mainly this uh, wheel nut sockets. Uh, just uh, extra wheel nut sockets and I use them in my three eighths impact to the three eighths drive. So, I don't have them for any other reason. Um, if you want to look right here, I have another tape measure. It was probably free if I was there. I have, these are the missing pry bars out of my snap-on set. This is the missing hose pick right here. This is an additional. I'm just going to add over time. I'm just going to look for different colored handle pry bars to put in here. So if I go like, if I have somebody working with me, I go, hey, I need the green handle, you know, pry bar. They're like, oh, okay. You know, I don't have to tell them what it is. And then I have a Milwaukee pry bar right here that I got. And I like the angle of the bend right there. The pry bars are kind of chintzy, but... They're not bad. I mean, the, the, it's just a spice, the variety, the spice of life or whatever, you know, like just a little bit different kind of helps out. And then I have another Max scraper and this is, I just use this the beep, you know, differential covers open or, you know, oil pans or whatever. This is the Dominator straight pry bar. I use this all the time, especially whenever I'm doing like a brake job and you want to go and start pushing the pistons back in the caliper. You just kind of like wedge that in there and you can do that. This is a blue point pick. I got this. It was just part of that, you know, that epic, you know, deal I got from my snap on guy. Um, you know, he just sold me a bunch of stuff. And, you know, cash is king. I think that takes care of pretty much the top. Um, if you see anything you want to get a, more information on, you can always, you know, timestamp it and send it to Lindsay. And if you got that much time, then you know. <laughs> we'll start with this drawer. This is um, like, you know, this is, this is what I use every day, and I try to use my big box to supplement all this. So we have like some torque drive here. These are snap-on. The ones in the back are Lyle. And as Lindsay would say, this is in the full extension drawer. There's like a hidden gap back here. But I'm fine with that too because I always freak out whenever there's that. Whenever it's flush right there, I'm always afraid I'm going to drag that dude off. And then here's some snap-on E-Torques. And then these are snap-on 3 8 drive shallow impacts. These are Harbor Freight. And I'm just waiting for the deals to get better at you know gear inch or sonics or whatever i mean they have they have sales all the time these are snap on these are all snap on chrome uh, quarter inch drive universals um those are all like broken sets i've collected over the years there's no i didn't ever buy a set it was always like i got the 8 the 10 the 12 the 13 9 16 and a half inch and then i just added on from there these are snap on metric allen sockets these are the other half of that sonic set or no i'm sorry expert set of uh, impact, you know, this is the quarter inch drive metric version. I only really have metric stuff in this box because whenever you work on modern vehicles today, almost 99.9% .9 of everything else is metric. If I need something standard, let's come over here and open the drawer. I grab the tray, I stick it in here, and I'll work out of the tray. Um, right here is the oil filter socket. And unfortunately, I work in a single man or a two man shop, so, you know, we have to change the oil a lot, and it sucks, and I hate doing it. Uh, I got an O2 socket there, I got another socket for canister style filters. And then I have a little tray here with a bunch of adapters, you know, you can figure it out. Um, and then these guys right here and more moisture mitigation there. And then these guys are snap on. These are like the extension with a universal wobble on them. And they're, you know, they're really handy. I know Mac makes or Mac sells one. I think Gear Wrench has the, you know, the X drive ones. And I just happened to end up with the snap on ones. It was just how it worked out for me. So got those and then i always throw this now the reason i don't have all my tools on my lid and on there is moisture it has 100 percent to do with moisture because it's texas and the humidity changes by the day here so one day you could have nice and dry and the next day you know all your stuff's covered in sweat so 
you just have to you just have to know how to protect your stuff and if it gets really humid outside i'll take my paper sheets and i'll put them over here just kind of protect myself um this is another mag deal these are the stubby torques these things work out more times than not you'd be amazed how many times you use that these are the metric deep or the metric long allen keys or allen no, they're not allen keys but allen sockets they work out pretty well spark plug sockets i got a whole variety of them you just never know what you need i never bought a set I just kind of bought them one at a time. Some half inch extensions, three inch extensions. I know I got three inch extensions coming to my, out of my ears. Um, this is, I've had this ratchet right here for probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years, something like that. This is like the first flex head ratchet I got. It's a pretty good ratchet, I like that. This is a newer edition. I bought this one probably five or 10 years ago. I don't know. I don't know how long it is, but however long it's been out. That's how long I go. I got it. I got it when it first came out. It could be less than five years. I don't know. This is, this is another good pickup. This is a quarter inch drive body ratchet with a three inch drive head. So everybody's got one of these. Some guys make them, I don't know. I don't know how many teeth are on it. It's functional, it works. So um, I use it all the time. Torque wrenches, I know I kind of lit in on torque wrenches. These are both gear wrench torque wrenches. And so the reason I bought these gear wrench torque wrenches is because it was like 220 bucks for the pair. Something like that, 240, something like that. There's a buy one, get one. Yeah, it's a BOGO yeah. deal, right? So to get one of these things, calibrated, it's like $150. I'm like, well, let's get two and not worry about it. <laughs> I'll, just sell the, I'll just sell the other one that needs to be calibrated. So it worked out. You know, I'm sure that Gearinch will have another sale coming up in another yeah. year or so, and I'll just trade them in and get some new ones. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, but if you think about it, it's like one of those things where you're like, why would I pay more money? Well, if the tools hold value, and they do, and you take really good care of them, and you do, then there's there's some value to be had there toward future purchases and that's one of the big advantages to taking care of your stuff and buying quality stuff because you can't either resell it or trade it in or yeah why would get i some pay, money why for would it i pay 300 dollars to have them recalibrated when i could just get two more for 220 dollars <laughs> and sell the other ones right? and make you know 50 dollars off of those and then i have this guy this is a great ratchet um, i use it as a breaker bar a lot but you know it gets abused, but it's snap-on. They all warranty it, so as much as progressing as they want to sometimes. But uh, this is a good one. The only thing I like about this box is this drawer rubbed here immediately. And I always thought about complaining about it, but then again, you know, I figured <coughs> what I would do to be far worse than that. So yeah, well, this is like one of those characteristic things you just get. Uh, another wrench drawer. You see, I got the moisture mitigation right there. <coughs> this is actually the gear wrench. This is a flex head, the serpentine belt tool. I just picked this up this year. I don't remember what month. This is some more stubby wrenches. These are snap-ons. These are Craftsman wrenches. This is, I got these like when Sears was going out of business. I think I paid like three dollars a wrench for them or less. Uh, this is the Monster Mobile. You can't get this anymore because they don't exist. Right. Wrench extender. This thing right here. If you don't have one, go find one. They're worth it. Um, I'm sure that whoever owns them, K-Tool or whoever owns the brand, is gonna or ISN or whatever it is. I don't know. I haven't seen them, but I know Mueller Cubes has a version of it similar yeah. but yeah, i'm sure they'll be out i mean like it's too popular an item not to that's been a very popular item and then these are the original gear wrench flex head ratchet ratcheting wrenches i've had these for as long as they've been out they came out and i bought them and so i bought the set from from 8 to 25. and the only reason i didn't buy a larger set because i didn't sell one at the time so but i made sure to get all i wanted all of them hmm. and then this is snap on flank drive uh, metric wrenches i've had these for as long as i've had my standard wrenches so and then i have some magnets down here a couple different magnets now and then i have like some blue point uh mirrors the reason i get those magnets and mirrors is a warranty for life so if you break the glass on the mirrors they don't ask any questions they give you that's why it's worth getting a 20 dollar mirror i have i bought some other cheaper mirrors from like you know lows that are craftsman branded when it breaks they're never going to warranty it they're just going to you know tell you tough luck there fella so even if you break it on purpose or accident or whatever you can still get a warranty from snap on so and then i have some cheapo popular mechanics these are my other allen key wrenches here uh those i don't mind abusing if i had to cut them up it wouldn't bother me at all uh, i think my father-in-law gave them to me back like years ago and he bought them from wall where he probably paid like less than ten dollars for both of them uh, here's another uh, nico uh, dial caliper gauge uh, these things, like I said, these things are only like twenty dollars, but they were ranked in the top five of electronic or E dial caliper gauges or electronic caliper gauges whenever in uh, twenty nineteen. So they're comparable with you know other brands. So I mean, like even the seven hundred dollar one wasn't rated too much higher than this guy. Mm. So I thought it was a good deal. 
This is a spark plug gabber, and even though the box says that you don't need to gab it, you should always check it because most of the time the idiots that are bringing your parts to you, they typically drop them and kick them. It's like, you know, having FedEx ship your stuff. You know, it's like the parts driver treated like FedEx. You know, they just beat your stuff up, so you need to check the gap. All right, down to the plier drawer. Um, you've kind of gotten a glimpse into this. These are the original pliers I bought. These green handle guys right here, these are Mako. I bought them from Mako guy in like 1997. Um, this is a Robo Grip. I got this for a high school graduation present from a guy that worked for my dad. I've had them ever since. I use them all the time. They're pretty useful. These get used a lot. Uh, these are snap on pliers. These just, these were, I had to warrant you got some pliers, and this is what I got. So, um, I bought this as part of that tool haul from snap on the cash tool haul. I, I think I paid less than $5 for these vampire pliers. I mean, these, these things are awesome. If you never owned a pair, you need to go get a pair. I mean, like, they're just unbelievable how useful they are. They'll hold on to almost anything. And they're great for like little tiny hose clamps. Like when you're working on like six O's and you know, six fours and six sevens, all the four diesels, these things are so handy on those smaller hose clamps. I just get in there and do it. Uh, I bought two sets of these uh, Nepix cutting dikes whenever I first started in the business. And these are the same two sets. I had the other set in my house in my home, in my, uh, at my home shop. Uh, they're still as sharp as the day that I got them. They've never loosened up. I use them all the time. You can't kill them. I mean, like they're the they're the they're the best tool. I, I bought it once. It's one of those things. So if a new guy's getting in the business, this is worth spending the extra cash for. I mean, don't cheap out and buy the cheap ones because you'll you'll hate them. These are warranty for life, and they're they're I mean they last forever. Um, these are brake line uh, clamp tools here. They're like a they're a part of a Mac promo. You just have to be real careful. You can't use it on any European cars because almost every European brake hose is lined, and you'll crush the liner and you'll ruin them. So you just gotta you gotta be careful what what product you use it on. There's a snap on, you know, um, what you call it, needle nose pliers. This is battery terminal pliers. These this is snap on brand. This is pretty pretty popular. This is another crimper. This is a Blue Point brand. The funny story on this crimper is I lost this crimper for 18 months. I was working on a car and I had to leave. I had an emergency and I had to leave. And so they finished up the car, you know, for me. And I guess these just slid down the grill and they were kind of like caught behind the front grill. And so I'm like, man, I could never find these things. And I always thought the guys that finished up the job stole them from me. I feel kind of bad for accusing them now. But uh, then uh, 18 months later, I had to work on the car and I go, hey, look, there's my, my, my <laughs> That's such a, such a dick move on my part. But it's all right. I apologize to all of them. They're fine with it. They're all my friends anyway. So um, these are another of those panel clip tools. This one actually works better than most. Uh, these little guys right here work pretty well, so I use this a lot. I've had this longer than the than the uh, gear wrench ones I bought, and I still like it better. I just it's one of those things where I thought the gear wrench ones would be more efficient, but they weren't. And this spreads battery terminals, so anytime you're working on a Ford diesel, you always have to go fix the terminals because some idiots worked on it before you. So um, these are oil like the oil filter canister style sockets. You know, it's just another set. I just keep it here because I. We do do a lot of service work on canister style, you know, fuel filters, oil filters, all that kind of stuff. Uh, these are hose cutters. Whenever you're cutting heater hoses, vacuum hoses, whatnot. This is another magnet. This is another grabber tool. And then I have some of the Milwaukee small vice grips in here because I use those Milwaukee small vice grips all the time. I know they're not vice grips. They're like locking jaw pliers or whatever. What do they call them, yeah? Sorry, some brand infringement I probably created. Uh, these are the Nepix alligators yes gators correct gators. yeah gators and so this is part of the snap on tool like i, I probably paid for like less than five dollars for this set right here i mean this is all like just epic deals so and this came out of the snap on guys like truck he was getting rid of it he wanted to do all that uh these are like some inverter or some spreader tools i i don't use this for snap rings as much as i use it to go and whenever you're doing like heater hoses and you have like a metric ish size fitting that you have to get on sometimes you have to stretch it and so what i'll do is i'll take my heat gun and i'll heat the hose and i'll stretch it at the same time just kind of get a little flare without damaging it and this is just the medium size on that nepix um the pliers wrench yeah the pliers wrench it's pretty good i mean i just keep it in here because i use it all the time like whenever you're doing whenever you have to go and change the the water uh, the water and fuel sensor on the fuel filter you know this works good to hold it and just take it off because you can control the amount of pressure you put on it while you're turning so that one works good this is the P pwz uh two from snap on this isn't the newest kind but when you're doing front end work man it really makes life easy because 
Number one, this guy just glides, that little bullet just glides down there like that. See how fast that is? And then you can adjust and get on a wrench and it gives you a ton of leverage. So they're worth it. Samuel's got a new one now. It's got like push button, you can set the depth, but I'm not trading in to get a new one. I like that one just fine. Um, this is a funny story. This is the greatest story on these. So I bought these used from like this lady that sold tools for a flea market. And so they're all like, they're like three different colors and it was missing the, the small one. And so I go and the handles are all just like crap, completely crapped out. They're like just split. They're like three different colors. They're all just like falling apart. And one of them got jammed. And so I talked to the snap on guy cause there was a deal on them where you could get all four of them. I go, if I get three warranty, do I get the fourth one for free? And so somehow it worked out that I did. I got the fourth one for free. So basically, <laughs> I think I paid like 15 or $20 for it. And I got the tray and the fourth one for free. It was a total weasel deal. But when you've been in the trade long enough, you kind of learn some tricks. So like I said, there's a grabber tool and a magnet. I think it was a Mac promo. This is part of that epic snap on haul I had that one time. Um, I don't I think this may have come off your Mac truck. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then here's another door spud that I have. It's, it really what I'd use is sometimes when I'm doing uh, window motor regulators, I either use this in an airbag or I'll use this to hold a different portion of the window. But you know, that's why it's in here. Then it kind of keeps the rest of the junk from rolling around. So it's kind of eats up space. All right, here's the power drawer. I've seen it. Um, I like every tool in here. That's why it's in my roll cart. This the, it's not a brute, it's just a regular long neck three inch ratchet. This thing is awesome. It's a high vis, nobody wanted it. I, that's why I got a good deal on it from Snap On. It's probably three years old. Works great. I, I have no complaints. This is a right angle Milwaukee. I use this all the time. It's not a ratchet, it's, it's just it's a really it's an impact, but I mean like anything I do, I use it constantly. It's like having a well three inch impact at your you know, at your you know immediate use so it works great it's like one of my favorite tools and it's well used you can tell i wish i had a boot i know they make a boot but the only fear i have with using the boot is that it, i'm just going to bust it up it's going to get caught because it fits in such this tight spaces already and then the key to this one is getting the the larger battery for it if you get the three amp hour battery it typically it lasts a lot longer and it seems like you can probably get a little more hit on it whenever you go um next are these these are the step drill bits these are astros um you can absolutely wail on these things and they don't they don't ever wear out i mean i we use them all the time i abuse these i shouldn't tell that to Lindsay because he's either got warned him <laughs> but i absolutely abuse these constantly um this is a snap on this is my under hood light under car light you can tell it's been melted before it got left on the exhaust manifold one time uh, but it's got a magnet on it because everything i own has got magnets on it um as far as 14.4 goes and uh but this is all my under car under hoods usage so i have another light another light like this and so i you can send these in and get these like partially warranty from snap on so basically i can get a newer one for 45 bucks so i'll probably do that this year i'll send this guy in and get it warranty because the head's starting to go a little loose so i know it's kind of it's kind of a cheesy way to do it but you know they offer the warranty take advantage of it and then here's my 14 4 driver and i got a i got a bit set down there i use this as a drill a lot of times with a step drill bit it's because the step drill bits have the little quarter inch piece on there and so whenever you're you know when you're just punching holes you know it's better than going to get in the drill it doesn't slip it's real consistent you can dial down the power you can also reduce the you can do the gear reduction and go at the lower speed so it's you know it's just a better use and then here's the high torque 3 8 milwaukee i use that a lot on anything import car related i don't ever get the half inch i usually just stick with this these are the mac anti-vibe hammers these work pretty good pretty well this half inch, or not half inch, this, the, the four pound sledgehammer here is an absolute animal. I mean, like, if you get a ball joint that's stuck, you can, you know, this thing swings. It's also got a nice long handle, so you get more leverage on it whenever you swing. And all, your hands aren't just beat to death like it would be if you were using a wood handle. So that's why I like that. And then I have my old school snap on, you know, dead blow, rubber mallet, whatever you're going to call it. It's the 32 ounce. Works good. I just use it for minor things. So, I mean, if I gotta get out the big Mac one, I will. And then I just wipe the piss at everything. All right, fun drawer here. Really, this should be a higher drawer, but you know I don't use it as much. So I paid a whopping ten dollars for this case here on the snap-on drawer. And then you see I have more vapor mitigation. So what I do is I use this um, this DVOM here, and I actually use it as a as a current probe whenever I do any kind of alternator testing. So what I do is I can plug it in and then this is, it goes up to 1500 amps. 
which I could probably check a starter on a larger truck, like a diesel truck with that. You check amp draw, but I can also, you know, I can do it with my snap on, but you don't get, you don't get nearly, you know, see how large this clamp is. This makes, it gives you such a huge advantage whenever you're working on something. And then you can check uh, alternator output, what the current output is while it's running. That way if you go and you have like a bad alternator and you replace it, you wanna make sure that the alternator is not constantly trying to charge the battery. You know, and you wanna see what your running amperage is. So it gives me a huge advantage. I mean, there's other, other, you know, like other brands have something similar, but this is super accurate too, super accurate. And then this is a regular stamp on Devo M. Um, I just use it every once in a while, but I keep it in this case cause I keep dust off of it and I keep moisture out of it. And so, I, I got I actually got the idea for using the cases from another guy uh, JRC 54 he's on YouTube and, uh, he uses cases all the time for all of this electrical stuff uh, I've been kind of on the lookout for one for my micro vat this is the snap-on propane torch it's nothing special you know it just does propane so this is a noise light set this comes from Harbor Freight it's made in Taiwan which I was surprised I'm surprised it's not made in like Rio China this actually works pretty well if you're just checking like some quick injector stuff you just want to make sure you let your driver's working. It's a, just a good quick check, you know. So that, like if your scope's committed or... I, I have kind of a rant on my snap-on. The setup I used to have, before I had the Modus, I used to have like the regular, not the, it was the Solus, and then I had a, I had a scope, and I could always take my scope over on the other side of the car and go test with my scanners in the car, but now it's a two-in-one, so sometimes my scanner is committed to watching, you know, PID data, and then I have to go and look at drivers or whatever, so I have to kind of work around that. This is a tool aid back probe set. Everybody should buy one of these. They're like $20. I think they're maybe cheaper online. I don't know. These things are great, but you can back probe everything, and they have all these little jumper wires. It's definitely worth the, worth the cash. This is an inline spark tester. Um, second time's a charm with this guy. I've had to get it warranted out already once, but it works. It works well. And, uh, yeah. It's good for coil and plug, any kind of testing. You know, if you're looking for spark plugs, there's another, I can't remember who has it on their truck right now, but they have one of the inductive ones where you can test the coils. It's got the inductive tester. I think I might pick that up pretty soon. And then I'm, I'm dork out. I have a, I have a positive and a negative battery terminal cleaner. One's for the positive terminal because you know on the top post battery, the positive and the negative are two different sizes. So. I, one's older and it's more worn out, positive. One's negative, it's newer, it's smaller. And that's what I use for the negative side of the battery. My power probe is right here. This is the power probe two. Um, I have two of these and I'll never get anything better because I, I like just the simple function of this. You know, it checks for power, ground. Um, you can apply power and ground. And then with my little adapter, I can go to a five volt reference. I don't really want the new power probe but I have no interest in it. So uh, I've used a couple of them. I just, I don't like them. So maybe I'm just old school or something like that. I might use one one day. That could be completely full beans. This is a microvat. I bought the used off the Snap-on truck. He had it. He had it repaired, and it works pretty good. The only thing it doesn't tackle is AGM batteries, but I can still test alternators, starter output, uh, batteries. Just I can't do the uh, AGM batteries, so that's not that big of a deal. For what I paid for it, it was like. You know next to nothing is whatever he whatever he paid to have it repaired so i got a good deal like i said it's one of those cash deals cash makes deals so all right final drawer on the roll cart and here's that mac bit set i, I told you all about i probably got this from Lindsay years ago this is a stellar set if you don't have one of these go buy one they're worth it it's got every driver or every bit you can think of and they're all you know these deep bits i use them all the time it's a great set i like i use these so much i just leave them out on my magnet I move them um down here we have this is a set i made i bought these from probably harbor freight and then i took this old trim panel box and i just organized them out so whenever i do a front brake job or rear brake job that has uh, disc brakes and has caliper brackets i always clean all the pins so even if it looks brand new grease i go in there and i clean it all out we start fresh we put fresh grease in there because it's not worth it you know the customer pays you to do the job once so do it once um this is a master disconnect set here. Once again, you know, when they're on, when they when they're on like some kind of promo, you always pick one up because you always lose something, break something. I have some additional pieces. These guys right here, this guy, I think those are all additional. But, you know, it's pretty standard stuff. Everybody pretty much has something like this, I would assume. And this guy's a, and I got another C clamp. I got two of them actually. One up here. 
You can use them to depress brake calipers and hold stuff, or whatever you see clamp stuff for. Um, these are plug kits. These are good right here because whenever you pull like a, a line off and you want to stop a, dri a fuel drip or a trans cooler drip or oil line or whatever, these guys, there's all different sizes. You can put them on brake lines. Brake lines up to oil cooler lines, so they're all different sizes. So they're good little clamps. Just put them in there and it just keeps the fluid from leaking all over the, your job while you're working on it. And then I added some different cups because whenever you work on Hondas and you have to do a time button, pull the time or pull the power steering pump off, you gotta be able to plug the hole the hose up for the power steering. There's some different fittings in there. I never use those. So. Alright. We'll get to the <clears throat> caliper depressing tools. I think I got these on promo from Mac. These are a pretty good deal. You know, they're a dual piston caliper, but you can use them for the single piston, you just have to go put this in the center or put this on the side and put this in the center it's, it works the same these work pretty well and this one probably needs to be warranty because it's pretty chewed up because when you do a one-ton caliper sometimes calipers are kind of sticky and so you know I, I, I don't know the meaning of that oh, don't try that you know <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a this is a regular coolant system pressure tester and this is the actual this is an approved uh, repair by snap-on by the way no, it's not. <laughs> Um, but as you can see, this is just a regular pressure tester. I use this fitting all the time for whenever I'm using the coolant refiller. And the way I look at it is on a cooling system, you can you can pressure check it two ways. You can vacuum check it, which, you know, whenever you use before you refill it with the cooling system, you know, refiller, you can, you're basically vacuum checking it. If it holds vacuum, then you step one. After you fill it full of coolant, then you can go and run it for a while, and then you can check it with this guy, and that's check two. So it gives you two ways to check it without, you know, it kind of gives you a, like coming and going. It's kind of like on an AC leak. You, whenever you check AC, you check it for a high pressure leak. You also check it or for a dynamic leak, but you can also check AC for a static leak. So once again, there's two different ways to check the cooling system. Um, more vapor barrier, moisture mitigation. This is the other half of that back promo set here. The axle nut sockets. And, you know, we work on a lot of driveline stuff, so these get used a little bit. All right, so this is part of uh, my monster setup here with the the little magnet holder up there. This can holder right here. I have some enforced for like penetrating oil, some brake lube, and then I have some regular standard oil uh, lube O-rings or something like that. So I always keep that on there. I never put anything on dry, and I never use penetrating oil. Uh, this is a pry bar I use for pry and brake calipers, and I actually have it on warranty right now. This is, these screwdrivers right here were all part of the Epic tool set. I think, like I said, I paid less than $5 per screwdriver. So it's worth it. Um, this is my air pressure gauge. It's a blue point one. It works okay. This is the other half of that Mac deal as far as blow gun. Uh, these were on Mac promo right here. They're not bad. They're, they're okay. They're kind of falling apart, but it's all right. I mean, all they have to do is hold brake calipers and they're not like, you know, hanging out with me. So down here are my roll lock pads. And I just kind of keep them all down here because it's like a good quick quick change into it. I never have to go and like dig through a drawer and they're there. And I work pretty much just me and another guy that work in the shop. So I don't have to worry about like people like walking off with my with my roll lock pads like I used to at the other shop, which sounds kind of goofy. Like a shop should supply this and the shop I used to work at, they didn't supply it. And it, your stuff would disappear. It was kind of like community property. I'm like, eh, I'm really <laughs> cool with that. So um, next is my Monster Mobile Cart. I bought this this year. I like this a lot. Um, I use it a lot over here on the, the four post lift because it gets around the lift pretty easy. And then like I said, whenever I'm doing any kind of like evaporator or under dash work, I always use the bottom side to put my 14 four stuff. I just, mag you know, it's got the magnets. So I stick the magnets on there. There's a drawer in here, but I usually put torque specs in there. Some of razor blades, I don't really put anything in there. The back side holds pry bars and you know, other stuff. And I do use it every once in a while working under car over here. So you can tell it's used. I mean, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but it's all I don't right. know how many guys know this. This here and this here are hangers for your air tools. No, I, I, I don't use them for yeah. air tools. I use them for pry bars. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I don't use a ton of air tools, but yeah. yeah. But you can hang the fittings on those. Yeah. Well, see, I learned something new today, too. And then we'll come over here to my wood top wall car, and this is infamous right here. This is like a lot of people know about this thing. So I'll give you a little, bigger, a little bit of background. The car is actually a plastic, it's a plastic cart that I bought from Matco. I don't know who originally made it. Um, as you can see, this is what the configuration originally came as. And so I used it, this is my first ever roll cart. 
Okay. Well, what makes this infamous is the top. The top is actually a dining room table I bought. It was like from my first house I bought from Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> and then one night in a drunken fit of rage, I think I crashed into the table and all I was left was a tabletop. And so I did like some spatial relations. I'm like, hey, that works out. <laughs> so I ended up with that. And then I have some grip mats. I got those for Father's Day. Um, those are pretty cool. Uh, down here I have a bunch of these uh, Hanson trays and then I have lots of parts in them still and then I have a plastic tub with some you know some little plugs in it just like plug off stuff this is kind of left over I had two real big projects I had I had gotten done right before the holidays and so I haven't necessarily cleared these off that's a tie rod an inner tie rod and tool there's some vice grips or not vice grips there's some zip ties there and then this is the Milwaukee M12 grease gun and I use that thing I go through grease constantly I use that thing all the time. So, like I said, we work on a lot of driveline stuff, a lot of heavy duty trucks. So, uh, we do a lot of, we lube a lot of chassis and whatnot. So, you know, they're paying for it, they're getting it. So, nobody ever went broke greasing. So, there you go. I don't know. Anything else? I think we pretty much covered. I mean, we've been here for a while. Like, my fingertips are blue. We've been here a while. We have covered more today than I think any other toolbox tour video has ever covered. Uh -huh. So we're gonna break this up into a number of parts. Hang on, let's, have you, let's turn around so we're looking at the light. We're gonna break this video up into a number of parts. Uh, part one and two will be Cass's toolbox and storage cabinet. And then part three is gonna go over his roll arounds and, uh, and, his, and, his, and his small work table here. So thank you very much You're for welcome. all the time, the information, uh, all your input. Getting a thorough tour like this is invaluable because uh, both new technicians and, and seasoned pros are going to get some benefit out of seeing how someone like yourself who's conscientious, who cares about the, the quality of his tools long after the day you bought them is really important. And hopefully everyone can pick up a few tips and tricks. The yeah, process. I mean, that's, that's all the process is about is sharing with everybody, make sure everybody can get better. So. Yeah. All right. Now, in the future, we've got some great upcoming videos with some tools in the hall segments, as well as some Matco toolbox and tool cart reviews. So, do me a favor click down here to subscribe now so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool, don't be one. <laughs>